Hello everyone, watch this review here with a look at Batman from the Dark Knight Movie Masters line. Uh, when these figures first hit store shelves, I wasn't exactly in a rush to go out and get them. Partly because I believe the store toys went to stores before the movie went to theaters, and I wasn't that fond of Batman Begins. I mean, I know a lot of people were like really wowed by it, but I thought it was sort of slow moving and I didn't like a lot of these character designs or costume designs, especially in the cases of like the villains and stuff, but, or even like Batman's new look, but, um, the Dark Knight came along and I started liking Nolan's version of Batman a lot better, largely due to the madcap antics of the Heath Ledger Joker. Honestly, of everything in sort of the whole Nolan's Batman universe, the weakest thing about it just happens to be the B-Man himself. I don't think that Patrick Bateman makes the bit sorry, not Patrick Bateman. Patrick Bateman was the character from American Psycho that Christian Bale played, but uh, I don't think Christian Bale makes the best of Batmans. And, you know, it's not like I think that Christian Bale's like a bad actor or anything. I just don't think that he was a really cool Batman choice. But I mean, that's just my impressions. At any rate, like when I first saw these figures, I wasn't terribly impressed by the look. But, you know, over time I did pick up the Batman on clearance. I think it was like six bucks at Toys R Us. And the Joker, again, like I think six bucks, but at Big Bad Toy Store, so... You know. Uh, let's get this open. <sighs> by the way, I should start by mentioning that originally they released just a few figures for this, and then Maddie Collector came along and released a few more Dark Knight Movie Master figures, which then went to Toys R Us after originally being released as Maddie exclusive, so... I mean, the line continued for, like, a good deal after the fact, and if you'd bought, like, at one certain point... Like, some of these figures were available cheaply at Toys R Us, then they moved the price back up to, like, $13, which I don't necessarily feel is sort of a good price for these figures. But, um, let me quickly show you the inner blister. The cool thing is, there is this Dark Knight sticker right up here. I'm not sure why they did this, but probably end up, like, peeling it off or something. It's just really weird packaging design choice, but, you know, it's kind of a nice touch. Now this comes with uh, two, I guess, kind of accessory things. Uh, first up is this Batman mask, and then a crime scene evidence bag. I guess this isn't for anything. Presumably for the mask, so this is evidence of something. Evidence that this is Batman's mask, I don't know. I guess if they were caught Batman, the mask would be evidence, but... Um, personally, I think that's kind of, like, stupid, just because instead of giving these figures accessories, we just give them these oversized props for, like, evidence, and, I mean, you could really have done without this mask. I mean, having a Joker card with the Joker is, like, kind of cool, and the Joker does come with either a card accessory or a knife accessory, but give these guys some guns! And Batman a bad ring, obviously, but... Onto the figure itself. One of the big reasons why I was hesitant to pick these up is the fact that these work on a slightly smaller scale. Here is a DC Universe Classics Batman, the Detective Batman from Wave 1. You'll notice this Batman's quite a bit shorter. I mean, the DC Universe Classics kind of work on, like, more of a six and a half inch scale, whereas these are kind of like a more of a six inch scale, so... I mean, it just seems like a kind of stupid idea to release a line of figures that isn't really compatible with the other figures you already have coming out, so... But, um, in Mattel's defense, uh, Hasbro's kind of done that with the Marvel Universe versus the spin-off lines for the... Iron Man 2 stuff is kind of taller than the Marvel Universe and the X-Men Origins Wolverine stuff was a little bit shorter, but um, articulation-wise, these are kind of similar to the DC Universe classics. 
me just give you a quick run through. We have a rotating wrist, full 360, single jointed elbow, rotating bicep, shoulder joint. You'll notice that the little shoulder pads here are directly mounted onto the shoulder. They don't really flap off or anything. Head rotates, has a good range up and down. Waist only rotates, there's no um, ab slash crunch joint. Leg has the same uh, range of motion where it can kick out, so we'll move forward. Rotation here at the thigh, single joint at knee. And then we have a single joint down here at the ankle. So I mean, articulation wise, kind of up to snuff. But something about this figure just gives it a sort of cheapish look, and I'm really not sure what it is. I mean, it might be the fact that this cape is really sculpted or anything, like, you know. Maybe it's just, like, the plastic they used or something, but something about this just doesn't rub me the right way. Detail-wise, you know, it's a pretty cool figure. I mean, you can see that there's a lot of sculpt work put in, little bits here and there. I don't know, just something about this just doesn't really thrill me. Plus, of course, the fact that it doesn't really come with any accessories. And This belt is glued in, but it looks like it's off-center, so I'm not sure what's up with that. It should be a little bit higher up because it's like kind of fall down or something. Maybe it's supposed to be that way. But yeah, um, honestly, so far I'm not impressed with the Movie Masters line, but I'll take a look at the Joker at some point and... I don't know, maybe that'll change my mind. But uh, until next time, folks. By the way, uh, really quick update. It did finally find a use for this mask. Bat Gremlin! Ha 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 ha!